Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Friendson. And if you can tell by the little intro card, I should probably turn on the phone. as loudly guys. But last we left off, we just did a loose cannon we chose revolution volume. What could possibly go wrong? We're now making our way into a fine tuned revolution in Axis 9. But before you know the things you're not supposed to do. Which is pretty funny, which I'm actually gonna pull up a little something uh how to get which if you guys are curious to get to get to this uh, realizing your OT3 achievements uh, going to the conversation you're going to want to have first is with Daria and ask and what, what's with you and you let me around seems like there's no you know I'll let you guys figure that out but basically talk to Daria first and then you talk with Bronya then you and then you talk with, well, actually no. Yeah, and then you talk with Rhaenyra, and those are the three conversations, and there's the two things you have to do. And then four, you have to ha talk with da uh, Daria and Lanera, and then, and then the yeah, the second co conversation with Bonya, yeah, I got to pick to a few things. I'm not gonna spoil too much, because I'm probably gonna do some uh, two stuff. Um, let's see here, so I do wanna look through and find, let's see here, find, because there is a specific way to get vol the volume 9 stuff, I think it was at least, unless it's in volume 10, I'll see, but anyways, let's, let's just get right into it, you guys don't want to hear me ramble. I finally machine revolution. Continue the next volume. So this route contains warnings for a depiction, and a depiction and discussion of state institutionalized, viol institutionalized violence, depiction of firearms, depiction of blood, depiction and discussion of death, discussion of mass murder, discussion of tire a child to death, and has action sequence. It also contains flashing lights. P viewer discretion is advised. If you have, if you are, ner if you. Do not like flashing lights for any number of reasons. You have been warned. Just because I don't want to just uh, mess it. The guys get serious issues. So. Uh. Oh, there's a lot of notifications. What the heck is going on here? Chixie. Did you know Sci Fi only pays me 0 0.004 per stream? Did you know Sofi takes 30% of my money? Maverick has a whole bunch of stuff. Anyone knows about Project Lightbring? All confined rumors are secrets everywhere, even up to the highest level. It's not gonna stop. You think you're the first person to try? You think this is the best way forward? Stop trying to fix this crap from the inside. You can't fucking do this. You think every jade wants to be a caretaker? Eris or Empire, it's the same thing, except buying the lie of a cult. Violets in the archaeology season in the star, purples in the ships, everyone's looking down on the low bloods. Stop lying to yourselves, every Nateran deserves the right to determine their own path forward. One day someone will come up and come along and give them a push that they'll need to rise up. There's so many people in the colonies, so many fighters just waiting for a fight. Trending in pure creoles, my fleet stories, exciting like the Hellsman. Trending in Everdon, local gossip, publish publication offers are burned to the ground, owners missing. Tre trending in Ledger's Corpus, Ledger's Ledger's closing, and rebel terrorist Tetriarch. Right? And then they know that everyone's been different. Everybody fucking knows the red Tetris been talking different. After a sweep of opinions, cause there is bit kind words to be closing our doors due to personal creative issues. Not surprising. Just heard a bunch of rebel blood shulkers burn down one of my favorite publications to the ground. Hope someone's ready for some vengeance. That is certainly weird. You spend the day uncomfortably crammed into the drain pipe until the sun goes down, enough for it to be safe to travel again. 
Once more, it's nighttime, and you're still wandering the streets of Everdim. The neon wash settles over you in a haze, and that never leaves your finish vision, even when you close your eyes. Last time you were on Eternia, you don't remember being in a city that felt so big. The little suburb of Alcala was nothing back in, was nothing by comparison. The weird thing is that even in the, the city, you see abandoned buildings all over the place. A constant reminder that everyone has a couple of decades worth of life before they end up being sent off world. Even if those are rare exceptions, mostly those circumstances or luck, everyone has the same fate in the end. You can't just leave them here to deal with it. They deserve the best chance they can to get to fight against the Empire. You got the feeling that the Empire is probably looking for you too, in spite of or maybe because of your best efforts. You manage to poke your non-existent toe into all kinds of new things. And now you feel like you've, you're at an impasse. It's been days and you're not any closer to understanding how to get any of your powers back. Instead, you're just drifting from encounter to encounter and stumbling in and out of situations of varying degrees of lethality. It's not really all that different from how you, you're used to do things when you first came to Antonia or on Earth, for that matter. You can't help but wonder those, about those friends back on Earth and whether or not you'll be able to see them again. Which I'm not all that surprised. Because this is definitely a very interesting... You notice all these thoughts is almost enough you don't notice all the van that's been following you for the past three blocks. <laughs> uh, that's why am I not surprised. Yeah, because I'm just double checking a few things. Uh, just double checking. Spare the chance. Okay, no, nothing relating to this chapter at least. Um, quick time events. <sighs> uh, you quickly jump around a corner on a cross street only to get find yourself boxed in by an airline of park scruggle buddies. Behind you, you hear the sound of, oh no, car. Uh, <laughs> your fan screeches to stop a few yards ahead and driver's side door opens. You're ready for anything. Well, okay, ready to run screaming away from the Imperial Snatch and Grab team that's here for you now, apparently. Wait a minute. Oh, holy shit! It's you! Malik! The Cerulean Freight breaks down to a massive grin as he rushes towards you. Before you know what's happening, Malik has you in his arms and is sque squeezing you into a surprisingly tight hug. I missed you! Thought I was never gonna see you again! This is amazing! I saw you walking and I thought... Wow, maybe it's them, but I wasn't sure. Yep, yep, that's you. That actually went to be clear what you were smiling. Well, I mean, we could talk about that if you want. See where this goes. Yes, or maybe perhaps isn't the best time. For one thing, you're still a little bit freaked out that you almost hit you with a, his maybe very looking van, cool looking van. Malik lets you go and steps it back. Oh, shit! Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Sometimes it's tricky to gauge distance, you know? You last nervous lingering. But, hey, you're here terrible. now. So, actually... Malik shuffles his feet. I don't want to sound weird about this, but do you want to come back with me? Like, to my place? Fuck! I mean, uh, not like that. Uh, not if you don't want to, oh, anyway. Malik's oh, like, oh, adorable. Go, I'm totally gonna go with him. You know, yeah, why the heck not? You tell Malik that you'd be delighted to check his van and go to an unspecific location with him. Okay, that sounds pretty bad, but you know, Dalton, you can make your own decisions. Cool! Well, hop on in. It's a little bit of a drive. You sign to the back of the van, which is surprisingly spacious. Malik hops in half you, grinning. Damn, feels like forever since I saw you last. Oh, hey, give me your palm husk. Wait, what? Malik reaches out his palm and gives me a gimme, that makes a gimme motion with his hand. Reluctantly, you hand over the burner palm husk that Togoa gave you back. Well, you think it's only been a couple days, but it feels like forever ago. Sorry, not trying to be weird, just... Malik quickly pries uh, back up, uh, back, 
back of your palm husk off and squints at the inside, scrunching his face up. After a moment, he pulls a small device out of his pocket, sucks his paw out of the palm husk, and presses the device back into place. There's a low buzzing noise, and does that mean it's working? Ralik nods, and after a few seconds, he snaps the backing back into your palm husk and hands it back to you. Again. There! You're all set now. Yeah, and all set with? Well, okay, so I wasn't telling you the whole truth before. I didn't just run into you randomly. I've been tracking you. Okay, not gonna lie, that's a little weird. How long is he doing that for? You know what, never mind, you're going to trust that he has a good reason. Malik nods solemnly. It was way too easy to pick up your signal and track you. You've been all over the place, huh? Empire isn't going to be happy that you're fucking this shit up, you know. Malik looks thoughtfully for a moment before his easy grin returns. Anyway, let's head on back. I'm so happy you're back. I can't wait to tell the others what's going on. Oh, yeah, the others. You haven't thought about that much, but to be honest, you wonder if that's going to be as if they're going to be as enthusiastic to see you again as Malik apparently is. They'll be so happy. Malik crawls over to the center, of the center control at the, in the front of the van and sits in the driver's seat, starting the engine with a roar. Wait, didn't he have a driver before? He thought he had a lot more people helping him. Malik shrugs and shakes his head. It's a long story. Not a whole lot of folks left doing what we do. I'll let Palipa explain it. Oh, Palipa's with him too? You hadn't figured her much of a rebel, more of a free agent. Oh yeah! She is the best. Kind of our leader, I guess. You've been working against the Empire for almost a sweep now. Met them through the underground music scene, you know? There's so many people in the colony, so many fights just waiting for a fight. Yeah, I remember, he was in Dario's band, right? Malik nods from the front seat, keeping his eyes on the road. Hell yeah! Me. Malik lapses into a few into a pleasant silence as he focuses on the road ahead. After a few minutes, he breaks into the quiet again. So, what are you doing back? I mean, I know a little from Tizius and Daria. Okay, maybe a lot. Okay, basically everything. I'm just trying to be friendly, sorry. Well, you appreciate the effort, and it is good to see him again after so long. You missed it. You can practically see the blush on the side of his face, even from the back of the van. Really? Well, I missed you too. It really is good to see you. After a solid, another solid 20 minutes of driving in circles and doubling back to lose anyone who might be following the van, Malik decides to finally pulls up in front of the massive building lined with dark windows. What is this place? It looks like a giant office building. Yeah, it is exactly that. Legis Lacerators in training used to use this place for a while, before the last of them got sent off world. Now it is just a big empty place that no one wants to touch. All kind of stories about how haunted it is. I might have encouraged some of those rumors. He smiles sheepishly and walks forward to hold the door for you. Walking into a lobby feels strange, and you get a weird prickly feeling all the way back to your neck, as if the presence of all the people who aren't here anymore weighing on you. You and Malik climb and set of stairs in the back, walking in silence until you finally reach one of your one of the upper floors. The door is locked, but Malik clicks forward and works a hidden latch somewhere, and you hear the loud click, and Malik swings it open. After you. Uh, the floor in the office building is lined with weapons, piled haphazardly into stacks of the rotting carpets. Ahead, you can see the city glittering outside the large windows, twinkling like a beacon in the turning night. You're not gonna lie, when you thought Rebel Hyatt, you were definitely picturing something a little bit more in the basement? I guess... we needed some place with a good network connection that was easy to get to. We don't exactly get to be picky these days. He grins and pats you on the shoulders. Plus, this is way nicer than a smelly sewer, right? 
He has a point, actually. Now that the initial wonder of the place has begun to fade, he knows the two very familiar-looking people are talking in the corner in low voices. You, of course, instantly recognize your good friends pa Papalia and Tagori. T the main character wears it for the second and third seasons, and it's a very rare collectible. You found it in a goddamn dumpster. That doesn't matter. It's basically new. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I love their design. <laughs> I love how he's wearing a Pokemon hat. <laughs> As Polypa uh, uh, Poly finishes her sentence, she looks up to see you standing there next to Malik. She steps forward in the middle of the office floor, picking her way carefully around a pile of guns, and then she unloads on you. You! What the fuck are you doing back here? You think you can just, what, just come walking back in? Maybe. Or, uh, hi, Papalia. How's she doing today? Don't fucking talk to me like nothing's changed. I mean, I just... <sighs> you were gone for so long. None of us knew how to reach you. Good uh, cat. Yeah, I don't blame you. You can tell if she's starting to cry or not. You can't tell if she's starting to cry or not. Her old body's shaking as if she points a finger out towards you like a particularly accused her knife. We needed your help. I needed your help. And you weren't there. I don't know. Fully like her voice, their voice. It's, I, I personally, my own head cannon's a little bit higher pitched, but still pretty good. She, I mean, granted, we all have our own head cannons and our voices sound. She doesn't say another word. The only sound that comes out of her mouth is fr a frustrated grunt, and she turns and walks out of the, out of the room. Well, that didn't go as expected. You turn to Gori, who regards you coolly. Hey, at least you and are so good, right? Gori shrugs. My Moirail is essentially correct. You were gone for an exceedingly long time. I can't say I blame her for her heated response. Okay, but you have a reason for being gone for so long. And what would that be? Well, it's kind of a long story. Spoken like someone with no true answer. I see. Tagori shakes his head, looking more disappointed than anything else. I'm going to go talk to my Moiril now. Ah, not surprised. Maybe. Uh, maybe put in a good word? Tagori doesn't respond, simply shaking his head before turning and walking away. Guess that didn't go quite like you expected it would. This is too bad. Uh, yeah, you aren't totally sure what to do with this. On one hand, it's really hurt to hear Papalia talking to you like this, but on the other hand, she's kind of got a point. You did abandon her, and when you can make it back to the first, you obviously can now. If only you'd been more on target coming back to Eternia, maybe things would have been smoother. At least you know where everyone was. It happens. Sometimes you lose touch with people. He shrugs and shakes his head. Sucks globes. Anyway, you want to see my special room? Well, wait, is that a euphemism or something? Is he hitting on you? Malik Ratchet. No! It's just a place where I do all my work. Okay, since he's being so nice about it. Malik's special room turns out to be his, a back office of some kind. The kind that's been absolutely packed full of computer equipment. You can practically feel the electricity being used by this place. Monitors to place the schematics and lines and lines of code. Notes cover a nearby cork board. And you sweat like you see several economy it economy sized cases of grub juice on the floor. This is where the magic happens. Uh, by which, I mean, this is where I do most of my work for the rebels. I'm not good with guns or anything. So, this is what I can do. 
He walks over and, and settles into what looks like an Ontarian equivalent of a gamer chair and taps his keyboard, bringing a nearby, nearby monitor screen to life. Uh, how's this place even running? This place went off the grid when it shut down, but we brought it back online. Tapped into the hard lines nearby for power and networking. Nice thing about this being an abandoned Legis Corpus building, it isn't on the Imperial Surveillance Network. So, we hide in plain sight, and I've got all the toys I need. This stuff looks all incredibly complicated. You're trying very hard not to accidentally touch anything. Yeah, it's complicated. But it's also important, so... This is kind of my whole jam, you know? Uh, isn't he worried about the Empire finding this place? Uh, Malik shrugs and stares hard at the screen in front of him. He doesn't answer right away. I mean, it's a possibility. Everything is a possibility on a long enough timeline. But I take steps to make sure it doesn't happen. That's good at least, because I would be worried if he wasn't being precautious. You look around the room. He definitely doesn't- it does seem like he knows his tech and knows what he's doing. You don't think you've seen so many, uh, tech doohickeys in the in one place before, Malik laughs. Yeah! We've got a shitload of those. Plus, if the Empire comes knocking, we can just hit the failsafe and burn this place to the ground. Ooh, mysterious. Malik brushes, uh, blushes and grins at you. You know me. A regular man of mystery. Have she heard any more from- Of course! She is hanging in there with her mate spread. Aww. Honestly, she is even more down with the revolution than she was before. That's saying a lot. Yeah, you feel like you ended up lighting a fire under their collective butts for sure. Sessa's learning about her ancestor probably didn't hurt on that front. Oh yeah, I knew all about that. Wait, what? And you didn't think that maybe mentioned this at some point? Malik shrugs, looking embarrassed. She knew about it. She just didn't want to think about it. That's not something I could have helped her with. Sometimes you gotta get there on your own. With a bit, uh, broad grin, Malik starts typing furiously on the keyboard. Actually, uh, we were in the middle of planning something before. I saw you were back on planet, so I figured I'd go check in on you. Uh, just as friends, of course. I could be more than friends with Alec. <laughs> sure, but what, are, but what is that? Is that what they're plan? But what is it that they're planning exactly? Malik pauses and is typing and glances over at you with his eyebrows quirk. I guess you're someone I can trust. It's hard to know sometimes, but yeah, I don't think you're someone the Empire is much a fan of. Yeah, you're not really getting the sense in general. You might have brought yourself a little bit more time earlier with Galak's help, but it's not like you're exactly lying low. Yeah, you really haven't. Okay, why don't you go way back outside? I need to do something really quick. You walk back into the large open if floor and stand by the window, looking down in the shining city below. In spite of everything, Atarnia really can be beautiful place. It can really be a beautiful place sometimes. It's hard not to think about uh, about all the lives those uh, that those lights represent. All the chosen who strange uh, sh who are struggling under the same empire. <sighs> Mesmerizing, isn't it? Yeah. You turn to see Tagora standing there, looking evenly. Yeah, you say, it kinda is. You're just thinking about all the people living in the city. Yeah, that's something I've been thinking about a lot too lately. He doesn't seem bothered to explain further. It is further. Instead, he's walking up and stands next to you. You notice he's got a rifle slung over his back. So, uh, what's that about? A master of the blade should never be without his blade. Right. But that's not a blade, that's definitely a gun. It, it's a metaphor! Tagara gets really quiet of all of a sudden, pressing his hands up against the window and leaning forward. How has he been anyways? It feels like 
It was just yesterday that you were hanging out and feeling and watching anime with him and pa 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 Tagore grunts and shakes his head. There's been a lot happening. Oh, like what? I'd rather not talk about it, actually. You respect a man's rights to his secrets, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, so. It's just that you're really good at listening to people's problems. It's like, you're really actually the only skill. Tagore doesn't respond, and there's something far off in his eyes that he can't quite place. No, not right now, anyway. Okay, everything is all set on my end. You and Palipa ready to get geared up? Tagori shrugs and turns away from the window. Of course. A true warrior is always ready. Okay, so what's that all about? You know, Tagori's deal was always basically being a li living anime stereotype, but it feels like there's something genuinely dark underneath it now. That isn't something I think I can talk about. It isn't my place. <sighs> That's definitely deep. Cool, nothing ominous about that at all. So what's that they're getting ready to do? Weapons. But pa uh, Polypa walks in and she looks different than before. For one thing, she's wearing body armor over her no a normal tank top, and she's holding a rifle that looks like, like the one Tagori had on his back. Weapons? What does she mean by that? Polypa rolls her eyes. It means what you think. We need weapons. Need ammo. She looks at Malik in the way that she feels very pointed and looks directly at you. Need a lot of things. But you just turn around the floor, which appears to be literally covered with weapons and ammo. Polly Polly rolls her eyes and walks over to one of the crates, kicking it, kicking it tip off. Her because you don't know what you're looking at. Half of these are so rusted out they won't even fire. Corroded ammo, dead rounds, worthless guns. Hmm. You think that she's made her point pretty well. The rebellion is running on scraps at this point, down to whatever bits and pieces they can cobble together, Steve. Or buy off the black market. Are you getting it now? Of course you'd know this if you'd stuck around. Look, real quick before things get too crazy, you really are sorry for disappearing the way you did. It just sort of it was sort of your fault, but she's gotta believe that you didn't mean to just vanish for something. I don't gotta believe shit. You wanna apologize? Great. I don't have to accept it. Maybe you're different now. Maybe not. My morals don't abandon me. Don't leave me alone. She frowns and glances away in the direction that Tagore left the room. The conversation, if you can even call it that, lapses into an awkward silence for a free few minutes. Eventually, Tagore comes back. This time, he's wearing the same kind of body armor that Pol Polypaw has on and he's holding his rifle. You meant to ask before, what happened to his sword? He seemed really attracted to that, attached to that thing and you haven't seen it at all. Tagore fixes you with a gold stick. I don't want to talk about that, okay? Remember what I said about secrets? Polly Pa leans over and puts a hand on her shoulder. She doesn't say anything, but Tagore nods quickly. It's... it's fine. Thanks. He puts a hand over hers and nods again. His face set. For a second, you see something there that looks really vulnerable, and it's gone. The place with that same set job of... Malik, are we ready to go? That's... I'm nervous. Yeah. Um, you make a trip back down to the stairs in an extremely awkward silence, with Polly, Pa, and Tagora walking down next to each other, and purposefully, purposefully ignoring you. Malik stays next to you, at least not everyone hates you. It's pretty cold comfort at this point, though. In the van, you end up sitting in the back with Polly and uh, Polly Paw and Tagori. Uh, Definitely a situation which is even a little bit extremely awkward. So, what exactly are we going to do? We are on an important job. You are an annoying parasite. We're going to meet a supplier of ours, a black market contact. Don't tell them that. It's fine. What are they going to do? I know you're mad, but they're coming along. They at least deserve to know what foes they'll be facing. From the front of the van, Malik clears his throat loudly. Shouldn't be any foes at all. It's just a simple deal. Ta oh, pff, I... They're a bro- Okay, okay. Uh, just a simple deal, Tetrarch set this up himself. Wait, Tetrarch, something about that feels familiar. They're a bronze build who helps us out. They're connected, ex with that one Arrhenius tickball player. 
You know exactly what I mean. Zephros, I knew exactly what he's been up to lately. Precisely. Although I fail to understand how those specifics matter. Yeah. Yeah, that's just... Uh, well, you talked to Zephros and he's pretty, pretty broken up over the scandal he went through. You tried to help him through it. You think maybe he's planning to help Trixie with her protest music. Yeah, a scandal because his ex Moirail turned out to be a major rebel organizer. Tigora laughs and shrugs his shoulders. Sometimes. The irony of life truly is inescapable. No oh, stop it, Tagiri. You swear for a second, a smile breaks on Paul and Paul's face, even if it's only for a second. Doesn't matter. Our contact relationship drama isn't important. He's got guns. Well, his connections have guns. This is the first time we're dealing with this supplier. After the last one got raided. Tagora gets quiet again and looks down at his feet. Legislacerators. Damn it all. He doesn't explain this comment at all, but you're guessing that further prodding would, wouldn't be appreciated. After a little while longer, you feel the van start to slow down and pass over a series of speed bumps. Outside, you see the city fade into shadows and you pull into some kind of covered structure. We're here. Okay, Malik, you stay here. Tagiri and I will handle the actual deal. And what about you? I don't give two fucks what you do. Oh, okay. Just stay close to us if you're going to insist on tagging along. We know what we're doing. You don't. You step out of the van and walk deep in what looks like a dimly lit parking garage under a building. Nearby, Polly, Polly Paw and Tagora are shifting their weapons nervously. About 30 yards down from the van, you're starting to feel very vulnerable. I don't like this. I don't trust our contact. Even if the Tetrarch did set things up. Yeah, no fucking kidding. Somewhere in the shadows of the garage, you hear the sound of an engine starting. A dark gray car rolls forward with windows almost completely blacked out. The car stops a few yards away and the doors open to reveal a troll in a dark suit and sunglasses. Stylish, but also extremely suspicious. You're the ones that Tetrarch said would be coming. Polly Bogosi and Tagiri Cowper. Yeah, what fucking of it? Do you have the armaments we're paying so handsomely for? The troll smiles and stretches their necks slowly from side to side. Oh yeah, I've got the armaments all right. As soon as the funds are transferred. Polly Paul leans over and speaks into a microphone attached to her body armor. Okay, Malik, wait one second. You, do you have the sample? The troll shrugs and motions to someone in the car. Another troll steps out with a large black rifle case. Walking forward, she sets it down on the floor of the parking lot. Chuck sure and, uh, and opens the case to reveal a long sniper rifle of some kind. As promised, we've got two of these, fresh from the Fleet Security Forces Armory. That wasn't everything we agreed to, and you know it. Of course. We've got six automatic rifles and 3,000 rounds of ammunition. Thing is, the price is going to be a little bit more than we told the Tetrarch. Troll shrugs and taps their hands absently. Polly out. Polly pod uh, bristles. Why? That wasn't what we discussed. Why are you changing things? You know how it is. You run into complications. Polypa, I don't like this. There's something wrong. Something the matter? We don't trust you. Can't imagine why not. Don't trust your Tetrarch. He's not our anything. Touchy. Well... The price is double what we said before. Unless you want this to go to someone else. Someone that's principled. I'm telling you, this feels wrong. Quick time events, violence, blood, and warnings of flashing lights. I'll recommend skipping over probably maybe a few minutes. I don't know exactly how long it'll be. You back away into a little bit. No one really seems to be paying you much mind at all when you start looking around the parking structure. Hey, just really quick thing. Were there always a couple black vans parked near the entrance? You see Polly Paul's- FUCKING control. BASTARD! That warning, she raises her rifles and fires in direction. Everything happens at once. Uh, GET YOUR FUCKING HEAD DOWN! Polly Paul bends over and screams into the microphone on your body armor. Malik, get ready to get us the fuck out! You rush over to the low concrete barricades in the middle of the parking structure with bullets whizzing all around you. Down at the other end of the parking garage, you can see a group of trolls wearing red goggles and heavier body armor. FUCKING LEGISLACERATORS! You keep staring at the trolls down at the other 
end of the parking garage and sees you east until Tegra grabs the back of your hoodie and pulls you down roughly. Good thing too, because I hail a bullets rip through the space where your head just was. Keep your fucking head down! You want to get shot? You very much do not. Any time would be fucking good! Two of the leisure slashers go down well it's Welts of tear coming from their heads. You're sick to your stomach. You can smell the blood. Hey! Come on! Jerry reaches out and grabs you by the shoulders. You can see him shaking, but he's definitely holding it together better than you are right now. We need to get to the van. Stay close. Trapped down by Tigor, hoping that his body armor will at least provide a little bit of cover for you. The van is up ahead. You're surprised that none of the legislatures are trying to fire on the van, but Polypa and Tagora are more a more immediate threat. Malik, I hope you're ready to go. You hit the side of the van and Tagora lands heavily next to you, firing his rifle as he moves. Obviously I could have gotten a bad screen, but I didn't want to do that. <laughs> you fall into the van as the sound of the bullets hitting the metal sides ring out all around you. At least the van seems to be Fucking Drive! At least the van seems Sounds building the metal sides ring all about you. Uh, at least the van seems armored. That's. Polly Pal slams the door shut behind and throws her herself low to the floor. Keep your asses down! No idea how good the armor on this thing is! With a sudden jolt, the fan starts moving. The engine surging as Malik could gun so deep. Hold on! This is it! You brace yourself against the side of the van. Polly Pal and Tagore are both lying flat on their backs, holding their rifles close to their chests. So that's what you do. Right up until we head around the corner a bit too quickly, the van whips. I must say, I admire your persistence. I really I do. Save. That you continue to put yourself in these positions in spite of it having no tangible benefit whatsoever. No, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. How can you say that you're not making a difference when you obviously are? No, oh, keep telling yourself that. It makes it more true. Are they alright? What is happening right now? So the van is... Yeah, your head pierced quite applied to the thing. And with that, I'm actually going to save it here. And I hope you guys have a good day, night, day, night, week, month of your lives. May the stars forever guide your path, wherever it might lead you, into the future. Bye-bye, everybody.